I was kind of failing in school. You'll see me often at internet cafe playing game. <laughs> it was really an ordinary life of a slacker. Somehow, miraculously, I got accepted at Northeastern University and even graduated magna cum laude because I had one phone call that changed my whole life. My mom called me to tell me that actually our family is going through a potential bankruptcy. Since then, my attitude to life changed completely. It really brings a lot of fire into my life. I wake up 5.30 a.m. every day. I'm always at the library or at the gym, but never anywhere else. I told everyone that I want to be bigger than Starbucks. Everyone thought, are you dreaming? Are you high? Right now, we are bigger than Starbucks. In 2020, it was the pandemic. Everyone told me that it's the end of Kopi Kenangan. Throughout COVID, we actually grew by 3x in terms of store count. Nobody can tell you what you can or cannot do. At the end of the day, it comes down to you, your will, your conviction, your hard work, whether you can make something happen or not. Hi, my name is Ettore Tirtanata. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kopi Kenangan. Kopi Kenangan itself right now commands around 900 stores in two different countries, even though we are only six years old. In total, we have raised around $270 million, ranging from Jay-Z, Serena Williams, Sequoia Capital, and several other reputable investors. Right now, we are selling approximately around 5.5 million cups per month. Hopefully, in the next two to three years, we will be able to sell even more, not just to Indonesian, but then to Malaysian and beyond. I learned that there is such thing called Starbucks Tall Latte Index. It's actually the price of Starbucks Latte compared to your daily income. US is around 2%. Whereas in Indonesia, it's actually more towards like 30%. There is no way everyone in Indonesia is drinking a cup of latte where it consumes close to 30% of your daily wage. Most cafe back then always thought of making a cafe to be large with very comfortable sofa with very fast Wi-Fi. A lot of people like myself don't need that comfortable sofa. I just want a good cup of coffee with affordable price. Of course, that means a higher COGS. But I realized if I make the space really small, what is there to think about? My hypothesis is that if I shift the rental cost to COGS, I can sell much high quality coffee at a much more affordable price. And that remains to be our business model, to be grab and go, to be small. It doesn't need seatings, but we can attract a lot of crowd. We are trying to take customers from online as well, because back in 2017, online delivery just started. I realized that whether your store is 200 meters square or 20 meters square, it doesn't really matter. In a business that has a big market, you always have a lot of competitor. I realized that we need to be differentiated. We need to look different than our competitor. A lot of people make their cafe to be a Western name. But then I realized that, okay, why don't I use Indonesian name so that I sound different? And that's why I named it Kopi Kenangan, a memory coffee. That branding actually makes people remember us. I do believe that with the recipe that we have made, with the pricing point that we have decided, we have a chance. First story is 2017. 2018, we try to expand because uh, the thing about coffee is that your catchment area is usually typically within two to five kilometer radius of your store. Obviously, Indonesia is very big. If you want to get people in other city, other district, other sub-district, obviously, you need to open a store there. And when we expand, actually, our logic was quite simple. We want to test for scalability, meaning that if I open nearby, the revenue still be good or will it be cannibalizing each other? That's why I intentionally opened this next store I think within half a kilometer away from the first store. Interestingly, I intentionally pick a location where it already has a bunch of coffee chain near ourselves. For example, in our first store, there is a Starbucks, coffee bean and tea leaf, and a bunch of street side vendor. On our second location, there is uh, also a Starbucks and Family Mart. We opened near them and we were thriving, even in the midst of like competitors. Well, using that logic, we keep on finding where are all these coffee chain and we open near them. We did well near them, why not open more near them? That's when we were really able to attract fundings because uh, we were able to identify opportunity to grab market share from existing larger coffee chain. If you are trying to get an investor to invest in your business, it's really as simple as how do you envision your company in the next five years? A famous investor from Sequoia Capital once told me that a good company raises money when money is the only constraint to growth. And everyone, including ourselves and our investor, believe that it was the case for Kopi Kenangan when we first got our large investment. And that's how we were able to grow quite rapidly. First year, we only have one store. Second year, we have 56 stores. Third year, we have 226 stores. You can grow really fast actually if you have that product to market fit.
I think the biggest challenge that the organization has ever faced is obviously in April 2020 when our border was shut down. Our revenue literally dropped by close to 50%. All of our stores are usually in mall or in offices and then suddenly nobody goes to mall and offices. What do we do? <laughs> no revenue means I cannot pay my employee salary. But then I overcome the challenge with empathy actually. How did I use empathy? I told all my employee that I will pay your salary. I won't miss your bonus. Even if it means I myself not getting any salary. I actually took a one rupiah salary along with my other co-founders because we want to show our employee that you have security. If they don't feel like they can feed their family, then obviously they won't be able to work well. They will just be worrying about their family every day. But back then, having spent a lot of times with the employees at the store, I realized that they work hard for the company. It's just basic human element to actually show sympathy, to repay kindness with kindness. That's exactly what I am trying to give to our employee, helping them get on with their life, helping them uh, work hard for us. I I'm really glad that I did that. I thought it was logical as well because we, we need to build uh, employer branding as well to make sure that people know that we are a company that is run by empathy, not by sadistic <laughs> culture of like all about cost cutting. Together, we were able to overcome the pandemic and of course, it's not just using empathy, but then we leverage a lot of online sales as well because that's when we really built our app and our app literally grew from zero to I think today around 3 million users because during the pandemic, we just doubled down on technology, whether it be on a third party or our own technology. I think the most important thing to F&B business is taste price and location. It is proven from the multiple FGDs that we have done as well with Nielsen and Kantar. A lot of demand actually fall off after it reaches certain price point. That's why you need to make sure that the price is right. That's why when I first started Kopi Kenangan, I asked literally everyone I can find, just compile data, how much would you pay for this coffee? Using data, we were actually able to charge a cup of coffee that is affordable to many. In terms of the taste, we realized that Malaysian and Indonesian have different preferences. That's why we actually reduce the sugar inside our drinks in Malaysia by 30%. Last but not least is location. If your location is like too far, nobody's gonna go to your location. Maybe once, right? Just to try. Are they gonna come back? No, I think people are just busy with their life. They don't wanna go too far to get something that they deem as daily necessity. During my entrepreneurial journey, I realized that the most important thing to succeed in life is to actually have a goal and then do micro things one step at a time. No great entrepreneur is ever make it from doing one big thing. It's always a combination of uh, small things here and there, whether it be trying to improve the recipe every day, trying to source for uh, better ingredients but cheaper, or whether it be to have empathy to your customer. It's all the small improvements that we try to do every day. That's why in Kopi Kenangan, well, we live by a mantra called day one mentality, where every day is day one for us. Never be complacent, never be satisfied with yourself. Always try to make micro improvements every day. As an entrepreneur, especially at my age, I am not satisfied to where I am today. I think the journey is only the beginning. I do believe that in the next five to 10 years, we will become a global brand, not just in Southeast Asia, but beyond.